and welcome to the Scholar Progenium. Today we've got another exciting bolt action battle report for you and it should be a really interesting one today chaps. We've got two new players as guests on the channel. They're getting ready for their first ever tournament. So uh, we're having a training game. So first up, we have Phil with his Americans. Now, Phil, you've uh, this bolt action is your first ever war game. Yeah, you've come to war gaming late. Never played as a teenager, kid. Nothing like that. No, nothing like that. Uh, so Greg recruited you. Yeah. From your mates at work, right? Yeah, mates at work. <laughs> and Greg's one of our uh, buddies from the AOS competitive scene. Now we'll um, go through the list in a bit more detail. Now you've. Starting off, you've got a second lieutenant. Second lieutenant. And he's just regular on his just own. Just regular. We then have the infantry. We've got two squads of eight veterans, two bars and three SMGs in each, I believe. Yeah, that's right. And very nice. Then we have uh, two squads of eight regulars, just a simple bar in those. Just simple bar. Then we have an air observer, of course. You can't leave home without him as the US. I mean, you totally can, but uh, you know. Yeah, nearly you got, had, yeah, yeah. You nearly had, but yeah, he's, good, he's really cool and very effective when he works. Then we've got regular mortar with spotter. We have, this is the three inch? Three inch gun. So that is a just a simple heavy field gun, yeah. isn't it? Four crew? Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good 36 inch half range. Pen six, two inch template. Yep. Can do it all, yeah. And then uh, following up in terms of support, we have a veteran sniper. And what did you go for your bazooka? Veterans. Bazooka. Veteran bazooka as well, dashing around, popping those shots. And finally, we've got a Stuart. Yep. Uh, do you have the Pintel mounted machine yep. yet? So he's just got all the yep. DACA, this one. Right, okay. I have to say, I'm very impressed with the list. You've obviously done your research. <laughs> Watch your video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fair enough, fair enough. You, yeah, so, you know, as uh, Phil said, you know, make sure you like and subscribe, guys. <laughs> Not only does it help the channel out, but it also helps you uh, put together a decent list. Uh, it's a good start. Uh, obviously, you could give it some tweaks, but I think it's, you know, really, really nice. It's a very good list for your start one. Yeah, yeah. JP gives it the, the thumbs up, seal of approval. Now, we've got Greg, our good friend, Greg. Now, Greg. Uh, to introduce you, he is a war gamer, okay? So he's, and he's also a competitive AOS. I actually met Greg training up for the Liverpool GT, AO, AOS GT, was it? I can't remember, it was a year or so ago now. Yeah, but Justice was it? Series GT was. What was it? The Justice Series GT. The Justice Series GT for AOS. Uh, so he knows his way around a competitive game. But he's fallen in love with his Tiger. So he's bringing that to his first ever tournament. He's basically uh, propagandized, as any good German player would. Uh, Phil got him there excited for uh, bolt action, and then they've played a few matches now. You've signed them up to a local tournament. Nothing yeah. too competitive, like 17 players or something, is it? Yeah, I think so, um, up in Ireland. Yeah, next next week. I'm going to buy myself a ticket. JP's already got oh, his. No, we'll tag, we're going to tag along with you boys so we can see, uh, see how you do. So uh, with all that waffle, uh, let's go through in a bit more detail. So Greg, uh, you've played quite a few matches of Bolt Action now and you're we're filming this straight after you having your... Uh, Butt kicked a little bit by JP off camera. Crippling defeat. Yeah. Crippling defeat, <laughs> one might say. Uh, so he's gone back to the drawing board. Uh, he's thrown the, together this list with a little bit of uh, pointers. He's got that tiger in there. He'll be borrowing my panther. Yes. Uh, I'm taking an extra dice to go up to 12 for the tournament. But yeah. for now, he's running the tiger, which he's got a lot of love for. I've never seen you not run this tiger over the last couple of months. Auto include. Auto include. He's great. He's great. But the panther's just a tiger. But if you play well, it's good. Yeah. it can do the same. Just spelled different. Just spelled different. <laughs> right, let's go. Let's stop waffling and go into the list. So we have a leading the list, second lieutenant, regular. Uh, regular. On his own. Four squads of infantry. You've got two seven-man veterans. Uh, you've got three SMGs in each, just because it's a early war, early to mid war. You can't take assault rifles, can you? Yeah. Uh, that's just the parameters of the tournament. Uh, and he's got an LMG in those as well. So seven man, three SMG, LMG. He's got two squads of those. He's then got two simple 
five man regular LMG squads. He's then got a sniper, regular or veteran? Regular sniper. A regular sniper, just saving those points. A perfectly viable choice. He's then got an inexperienced mortar with, of course, no spotter. Um, he's just, he's never run uh, this unit before. And obviously, it is a competitive yeah. choice. Um, and you can argue both sides. Regular with a spotter's got its benefits. Inexperienced without the spotter has its, its bonuses too, yeah. namely... Uh, saving a lot of points. So uh, you're just seeing which one fits, aren't you, yeah, today? Yeah, with the inexperience, they're just working out how the gun works. Yeah, it's just uh, try, trying it out for size because you've only been playing it you know, a couple of months. Uh, then we've got a inexperienced Neville Weffer, or what was he? I think it's regular. Regular oh, Neville Weffer, but we'll check that as we start rolling the dice. And then um, you're using inexperienced. inexperienced Neb, and then he has a regular flamethrower in a veteran uh, Kubel wagon. Uh, we're just using a captured British utility car for now. Um, he's just got to paint that up ready for next week. And then finally, well, you know, car's a car, right? Yeah. Uh, then finally, he's got his Tiger, the beloved Tiger, of course. Low fuel, it's the only way to run it. So uh, 300 and how many points? 356. 356. When you spin it like that, it seems like a bargain. Like, it's hard to... <laughs> uh, that, that takes this from, you know, you know, you can't take assault rifles, you've got to take SMGs, can't take Fausts, can't take a Shrek, and he's choosing to take a Tiger. So you could say with this limitations, is, there's it's limitations, it's, but with the, with the limitations, you're on 12, 11 dice. Yeah. If you take the Panther, it'll be 12 with a Straff Battalion squad, squad squashed in there for 36 points, won't it? Yeah, true. And then uh, that's what we've discussed. Um, and then I, I think, you know, what, what are your thoughts? I think the Americans, you've done this basically on your own. We had like a five minute conversation yeah. before this. We started rolling the camera. We've literally swapped a couple of models around. And a couple of ten-man squads. And a couple of seven-man yeah. squads, and we just made them eight each kind of deal. Yeah, just moved a couple of points around. I think this is an excellent list, man. I think you've done really, really well, if I may be so. If that means anything, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and uh, Greg, I think, you know... You've gone for the Tiger. You've gone for the Tiger, bro. <laughs> so uh, we're playing key positions, guys. So that means that they'll just be first wave, and we've already rolled its five objectives. So they just need to... Roll their objectives, pick sides, and then we'll uh, we'll be back when they're coming on. You left something off your army. Let me just put that on there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We will see. So here we have the field of battle after deployment. And now there is no deployment, but we're just going to talk you through the cover, and then it's first wave. Now, as mentioned, we're doing key positions. The boys got five objectives. They've got one in the open here. Uh, in between all the downed planes, obviously been some kind of um, skirmish above the woodland on the edge of this town. Maybe uh, these are the remains of a bombing mission on the edges of a ruined uh, industrial town somewhere in Europe. Now, we've got another objective in this little bit of difficult, this is uh, dense terrain, dense forest. So difficult ground and obscuring soft cover when you're in it. Um, all the other things are just soft cover. However, the craters, you don't get cover for shooting across them, only when you're in them. Um, we also have a tank track here. This is soft cover shooting across, but hard cover for infantry if they're in base contact with it, and no vehicle of any type can move through it. But it's totally uh, uninhibiting for infantry. They can even charge 12 inches through the tank, uh, through the Trust. dragon's teeth. We then have three ruins on the edge of the town. Uh, we've got an objective in the center of this uh, bombed out uh, building here. We've got an objective in the garden of this building here and another objective uh, symmetrically uh, behind this bombed out building here. Uh, the hills counters soft cover area terrain, as does this, but no uh, difficult ground. Uh, the back is just soft cover. You can see through it and the walls are obviously hard cover so it's a tale of two uh areas one might say you've got your soft cover but plenty of it and you've got your denser cover but with the roads running through it for vehicles uh, so we've got dice in the bag it's 11 versus 11 a thousand points on the nose gentlemen each yeah, just oh 998 so if you'd like to concede now no. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll get dice back we'll get we'll get these boys rolling 
So we're about midway through turn one. Let's have a quick look at what the players have done so far. Now, I should have mentioned earlier that we had a little bit of a twist, which is, I don't know if you guys have watched Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, but uh, you get three questions on that. And, you know, we've got JP and me here. These guys are new players. So to make sure we're not like eternal discussions over every dice, it's like a... You know, we get to turn three and we don't get to see the game through. We've given the players, and because they're practicing for a tournament, they need to be getting, on average, about a minute of dice at the most. And that includes, you know, between dice pulls. That's yeah. rolling your dice and everything, and not just thinking time. So with all that being said, we've given them sort of that time limit, about a minute of dice. And also, we've said they can phone a friend, which is when they can ask me or JP a specific question. Not rules, we'll give them that for free, just... Uh, like, what should I do? Tactical, you know, questions. tactical question. They can have, ask the audience. When they ask the audience, we want you guys down below to comment each term when they ask the audience what you would have done. If you've got the time, we'd love to see that. Yeah. It'd be really cool. And then you've got 50-50, uh, which is where me and JP will both, we'll give them two options. Like, sort of, you could do this or you could do that. Uh, just a couple of little prompts to help them tactically. Now, uh, let's see where we're at. So... Uh, the GIs, they've run on into this bit of soft cover here and they've run their officer and their bazooka team on just behind this bit of obscuring terrain here, keeping them safe. And they've moved the mortar on. They've got a spotter so they can hide behind this hill here. Their, this is your spotter observer just on the top of this ruin here. Uh, you can't be seen by the sniper because the forest blocks the way. But, um, you know, he's got a really good line of sight. You can't see behind this ruin here. But apart from that, you can see most of uh, Greg's side of the board. Especially as Greg gets closer. He's also got his air observer. Where did you put the air observer in there? Yeah, no, the observer's on the hill. Oh, the observer's on the hill. Yeah, sorry. Yes. The observer's on the hill back here. Again, um, just a relatively good uh, line of sight uh, across the board and nice and safe so he gets both shots off hopefully now in terms of greg he placed his sniper over here and the snipers are looking at each other germans veteran and the american no, the americans veteran the americans veteran germans regular the germans have not had as many dice they've dashed a five-man regular squad up behind this ruin here and they've dashed a seven-man veteran squad up behind this ruin here. So we can see the objectives are equidistant across the board, matching each other as we saw earlier. Now it's a German dice, his third dice, and he's activating his sniper. Um, before Phil gets a chance to uh, shoot his veteran one off. So getting a, getting an advantage there in the sniper duel. Shoots. He misses, misses on a two, oh, unfortunate. Uh, if you're a new player watching this game, it probably would have been a good idea. Although, you know, these are all really obvious moves. Get your simple dice up the board. Don't move your infantry on until you know whether you can advance and shoot or whether you're going to run into position. Um, maybe should have popped that sniper first, veteran sniper, uh, whilst you had the chance because you had a few dice advantage out the back. Uh, so we'll get back on with it. German veterans advance into the center of the board using this burning fighter wreck for cover. They're gonna fire some shots across from the LMG. Six is followed by sixes on the US sniper. One chance. No. US veteran sniper team using the burning bomber for cover. They're gonna pop a shot over at the veteran team that's just fired at them. See if they can kill the LMG. Three. He's got the hit, needing a five. No, got them in the wrong order. That's right, chaps, it's tiger time. Now, uh, Greg decided to phone a friend. This gave me the opportunity to wax lyrical, or you could say rant about tiger placement for at least a couple of minutes. Long story short, it's decided to go over here in the corner by the burning tail end of the bomber. Now, this gives him a good position where his, his targets are only gonna be able to shoot and uh, move between soft cover, and they're gonna be within half range. You can start taking some shots at activated infantry straight away. Um, and, you know, yes, this obscuring will um, block him when they get behind it. But as soon as they're into it, uh, they're going to be a target again and a very uh, vulnerable one at 
that. So it's good placement and he's low fuel, so he can reposition with just a one run as well and still be in a good firing position later in the game. So that's where he's decided to go for. Now you're shooting at the veterans. Are you within 42 inch range? I would say just almost certainly by eye, but we'll find out. The might of the super heavy anti-tank gun. Mm. Yes, easy. Yes, okay. So you have moved and it's soft cover. It's a mere five to hit. Uh, we can't go down. He gets the five. That's a pie plate. Three inches is gonna cover all of those guys. Um, we'll just, yeah, you can yeah. just gotta get it. Yep, so that's eight veterans. Now you pen plus three, so killing on twos with D3 pin. Killing on twos. One's got away with it. One, <laughs> a shell-shocked guy bleeding from the ears. Uh, roll your D3 pins. Is he gonna be lagging it? Three. Uh, three pins. Now there's no specialist there, so that's just your NCO. All his boys okay. killed around him. Now right. you need to roll uh, an order check and you need to get a seven or less because they're veteran. Four pins, one for the head, three for no, the head. No, no, it's just oh, three pins. Yeah. He makes it, so he lives. He can still take objectives and stuff like that, but you better keep his head down for a couple of turns at least. It's not over yet for the GIs. The Tiger's spraying a burst of MG fire from the hull mounted. Six shots on six. Oh, he has a couple. It's a nice burst. Killing on fours. No, no kills, but it is a pin. We get into the last couple of dice in the bag. Uh, the Germans have brought their Nebelwerfer on previously, and the Air Observer is just going to call in a strike onto it. Now, the Americans have called in their 50 50. Remember, they only get three big questions for the whole game. But uh, they've used them on their tanks, which I think is, you know, deployment. You can win and lose on deployment, can't you? Now, essentially, he's gone for his Stuart running 18 inches up this flank, safe from the Flamer, getting ready to bully the uh, German infantry as they approach these objectives and also, of course, safe from the mighty Tiger. Final German dice, he's got two and he's just advancing the, or running, I guess, the car on the Kubel wagon with the flamethrower crew uh, team inside. Uh, just as a defensive measure against the Stuart and infantry pushing into the town. Brings us to the end of turn one. The Americans have used their 50-50 question. The Germans phoned a friend. They called me to ask about tiger placement. Very honored, Greg, thank you very much. Now, um, let's have a look at the lay of the land. Now, the Americans, uh, they did have a solid block of infantry uh, doing a sort of broad denied flank. Uh, just leaving one third of the board empty and going up the centre and right. And the Tiger uh, <laughs> certainly has put a, punched just a big old hole in that, and that has left um, a squad of infantry, the sniper and the field gun, just facing off, uh, I, rather isolated, on this side of the board, looking at the objective in the dense woodland and the objective over on this flank, which is looking pretty secure. He can't hold it with this tiger, but you can certainly deny it, you know, at the very least. Um, moving over here, the Americans have got two other squads of infantry, Regan, a vet, bazooka, officer, air observer, all kinds of stuff, just uh, backed up by a quick moving Stuart, ready to fight over these three objectives here. So the Americans getting ballsy uh, with the lack of German infantry on this flank, they're right. They're uh, the, you know, the Germans are going to have to shift some defences across and the Americans could even push onto their objective. But Germans countered by bringing on a flamer there and that can certainly hold its ground against multiple units can take out anything the Americans have on this side of the board. Plenty of dense terrain to hide in. Perfect for a flamer. In terms of the Germans, they've gone for a much more broader deployment, setting up different fire positions, mutually supporting across their Deployment zone. They've got veterans holding the left flank, although now going to be somewhat outgunned by the infantry moving towards them. They've got an LMG regular squad backing up the flamethrower here. They've got more veterans in the centre, more regs ready to advance onto this uh, objective over here. And then the sniper and the tiger just ready to put in fire support on the Americans across 
this more clear and softer terrain side of the map. So two different approaches to the battle. Uh, comment down below at this point, what would you have done? How are they doing so far, guys? Turn one, let us know what you think. Um, no one's lost any dice yet, although the Americans, the Americans have certainly <laughs> taken a uh, little bit of a bruising. So we'll get dice in the bag and we're back now turn before two. Before we get into turn two, there's still some planes in the sky above this battlefield. It seems the Americans won air dominance. In the end, they're going to roll a dice for that airstrike. He's got a two. It's clear skies, but at least he hasn't fragged himself. First dice is American. Neither me nor JP saw this coming. Great little spot. Uh, no pun intended. The mortar spot, you can just see the back corner wheel of the car there. Can the flame of dreams come to an abrupt end for Greg? We'll find out. Needing a six. No. Oh. A resounding one. So a couple of dice in. The Americans decided to run this GI unit uh, trying to get behind the obscuring terrain. A couple of guys still in sight of the Tiger. Now it's the Germans, and he's going to activate this Tiger. Now, me and JP have been really good and kept our mouths closed because he should have probably popped a shot at the Tiger, got a second pin on it by now. Uh, however, Greg's made a mistake likewise because he's declared the machine gun against these guys, the GIs, and the big gun against the field gun, when really a pin would you know, do yeah. the job for now. Uh, so because the field gun hadn't activated, uh, the, it's just gone down, making it a six to hit. And the machine gun shooting into the gear. First on a six. Nope. And then six shots on fives. He's got a couple of hits. Oh, there's the sixes he needed. Yeah, then fives, Greg. Five, uh, are the regulars, right? Yeah, regulars, fours. fours. Couple of kills, roll those again. Any more six, you kill the Bren. Yes, so Bren or NCO? Bren. Uh, bar, sorry, Bar. German Dice is launching the Neville Werfer, a cascade of rockets into the mass of Americans here. He's just out of range of the officer, but it's gonna be a bazooka, GI squad, and that pesky mortar spotter from earlier. Infantry squad? Nope. nope. Uh, bazooka team? No. no. Spotter. Spotter? No. No. German sniper team going to try and suppress that field gun. He's needing a three followed by a four. Hits. Kills one. So that's a pin and down to three crew. American sniper is going to put a shot across and engage in the sniper Please. duel. He gets the hit, needing a four now. Oh, he's, he's done it. it. That's a dice out of the bag. Gun now support air cleared. It's a good shot. German regulars with the LMG advance past the forest and they're going to put some shots into the remaining GI NCI. Sixes followed by sixes. No chances. Germans continue their advance. An LMG squad uh, move between the ruin and the wall, just covering the crossroads. Shooting across the GI. Eight more shots on magic sixes. Oh, he's got a chance this time. Oh, he gets him. Could he kill him? He's a veteran. He needs a five. No, not quite. Four pins. End of the turn. Greg's called in his ask the audience. We've got a serious Mexican standoff on this side of the board here. As you can see, um, that Stuart is on ambush. Now, that does mean he can't really see much. But if the Germans enter this ruin here... You can hit them with the turret and the coaxial, and that includes the um, flamer if he hops out into it. If he dashes across, same again. And this infantry squad was behind this ruin here. If they advance into there, it's going to be 23 on the chin. Which was the Russian suggestion. After, yeah, that's the JP <laughs> suggestion in the Ask the Audience, because what that would do is valid. But he's going to take 23 on the chin, followed shortly by another 23, uh, <laughs> without the shot having to move next turn uh, with an early dice. But the flamethrower could advance into this ruin then because the ambush would be popped and probably wipe this GI squad out across the, uh, a burst of flame across the road. So that was one option that was suggested to him. Um, the other one uh, was to not advance into here and lose his valuable, expensive veterans, but instead to advance onto the hill shooting over the walls the gi's only get soft 
cover. So it's going to be fives with eight dice. Oh, one hit. You're rolling bad, man. <laughs> veteran or regular? And um, they are regular. Oh, nope. no. But the pin's Dice good. of the turn. Uh, Greg decides that, he's, that it's too rich for his blood getting involved with the Stuart with just a regular flamer. So he's gone down with the car and the flamer squad inside. So that brings us to the end of turn two, as we've said. Now, over here, we've uh, had a little bit of an uh, exchange of dice. The Tiger forcing the field gun down um, and clearing his pin. And the GIs dashing, although not quite making it behind this obscuring. When they get around that corner, there's going to be a lot of German infantry facing them. We've got two squads in the field, one across the road, really holding that road. They do have another, they've got more GIs and they're really getting up in the Germans' faces now and getting up against this wall, able to advance into this ruin, uh, advance up against that wall, uh, various different options, although the flamethrower is really locking them down. But likewise, the Stuart is a real threat uh, if Greg decides to get too cheeky, which has sort of forced Greg to be more conservative than he'd like with his MP40 uh, veterans. So, with all that being said, I think it's very much even Stevens. Um, one other thing to mention, uh, the sniper obviously got a dice out of the bag, so it is 11 to 10 now, but not the end of the world. And uh, the Americans are obviously a lot shorter on infantry. Uh, this guy, yeah, he went down, he got an 11 on his rally. Uh, so he's got four pins. So, you know, unsurprisingly, really, you know what I mean? He's too busy, like, clutching, uh, you know, <laughs> his, uh, his sort of wounded comrades. Uh, so, will I get dice in the bag and on to turn yeah. three, gentlemen? It's about to heat up. So turn two, airstrike attempt, needing a four up on the neb. No, it's a <laughs> no, one. It's a one. Oh, so, Greg. We'll pause the camera because you can have a little second to think about which target you want. You know what you want to do? You're going to airstrike. The GI's behind the building here. Okay, so uh, roll a another dice. See what type of plane it is. That's a three. That's a fighter bomber. So it's going to be a three-inch template and D2 additional markers. Okay. So, uh, Fighter Bomber dives in. This token is the bubble of D3 minus one pins from the plane. And then he's going to get another three rolls of D3 minus one on the um, officer. This GI squad against the wall and the spotter here, which doesn't really matter, but, mm -hmm. you know, it is what it is. Uh, and then he's obviously going to get another D2 pins on here plus a three-inch template. You could say it's the last thing you wanted to happen. Uh, let's roll some dice. He can shoot his flak. Stuart the tank, that is. No, he cannot. He identifies the friendly plane, decides to trust him. Misguided. Yeah, eight dice on twos against the, the GIs. Uh, that's a squad wipe right there. No, he's, gone, he's gone down, it's half. He's gone down, it's half. Four dead. Sorry, my bad. It's half dead, so he's going to need to roll a test, but he takes, he's got to, uh, two additional pins. And his officer is... Right and his officer's there. nearby, so you shouldn't run, but you might. I would. <laughs> he runs! Okay, GI squad gone. Now let's stack some pins up. So, um, we'll do the pins on the pins. D3 minus one is going to be no pins. Two pins for the GIs there, putting them on three. A pin for, he's, he's just not having a good day. Uh, then you've got the officer over here. Another two pins for the lieutenant, that is. GI's against the wall. And that one pin, it stays at one. That could have been big there. Could have locked them down on two or three. And then finally the mortar spotter. spotter. No yeah. pins, that pesky mud. Greg does not like that mortar spotter. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that could have happened to you, Greg. He's still got another. That's true. Oh, that's Second true. time lucky, as they say, Americans. Okay, we'll be back. Advances out of the tree line. He decides to put all his shots, uh, the big gun and the hull mounted, into the field gun. Uh, decides to, instead of gritting his teeth, he's hitting the deck for now, hoping for an early dice next time. Followed by turn. sixes with everything now. Big one. Always cocked. There was a chance. <laughs> nope. Well, nope. Okay, and then six shots, DMG. 
Three. There's three chances. Moves off cover, down. Oh, so. Come on. Can he get that second pin? He needs it. Yes, he can. Can he kill one? Five, because it's a gun shield. No. no. Just another pin. But two pins is, is progress. German veteran squad are going to shoot across at these GIs in the crater here. He's got to take those pins on the chin because uh, he needs to rally. Before I do, I've got to do a check with them. I've got to do an order check first, which he... Fail. No, they're veterans. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah passes just okay. about. Okay, um, so... It's 5-2 LMG. One hit. No kills. Okay. There's a pin. And two rifles. Now you're on four pins, it's hard to clear them even with one rally. Over half range, move soft cover sixes. Nope. nope. Okay. American Mortar's going to pop another shot from behind the hill. He needs a five now on this Cooper wagon. Yes! He gets it! Okay, so it's pen of two. Yep. Uh, your five on the... Uh, four on the top. No, five on the top. Sorry, I'm being stupid. So hitting on threes? Uh, yeah. Threes a glance. Threes a glance. Oh. Oh. <laughs> D3 pins and on the flamer inside, though. Three <laughs> pins on the flamer. <laughs> It'll do for now. That Cooper wagon, if it can pass its pin, it needs to get out Germans of it. have had a dice. They advanced down from the hill with those veterans. Managed to get a pin across on the GIs behind the wall. In return, the Stuart is now advancing onto them. He's in point blank, so it's going to be threes to hit. He's also within an inch of the edge of the ruin. It's all kosher. Oh, we roll that one, yeah. A healthy burst. All right, take out your misses. How many misses are we looking at there? Six. Top one's cocked, cocked, isn't it? Yeah. No. Six misses. Uh, seven. seven misses. Sixteen hits. Killing on fives. It's a tense moment in the uh, studio too. Too good. It's a healthy burst. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a cock dice. This one? Yeah. Seven. Six. Is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, seven vets squad. White. Oh, oh, come on. GIs in the garden of the bombed out house are going for an order check. They want to advance. Across that road, they've got a lieutenant nearby, so it's going to be the GIs advance into the building. Uh, Greg's gone down with his regular squad, so it's going to be four shots at point blank uh, from SMGs, and then the rest will be six as well. Uh, he's got a couple of hits there. And then nine shots on sixes followed by sixes. Yeah. Oh, he's got a few chances there. <laughs> uh, three chances, can he get another six? Yep. He can. can. So, killing on fours. They're only regs. Yes. Two. Two. One, and six. roll that six. Can you get the LNG or specialist? No, he's had enough luck there. <laughs> How many kill, killed in the end? Two. 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 Not yeah, bad. It's going to fire over the top of the town into this squad. Now they've moved into the ruin. They're visible. He's going to get three dice, including the officer there and uh, the spotter, the, the <laughs> accursed mortar spotter on top. No. Uh, spotter. No. no. Uh, officer. Officer. Yes, he gets the officer. No, he's not going to cover any of the unit with the template there. So it's one dice on a two to kill. And he's got a dice there out the bag as well. Rocket straight to the face. <laughs> nice rally. Uh, Corporal Unlucky over here. He's down to one pin now. Mortars popping a shot on these GIs here. Needing a six. No. This GI squad going for a rally now, getting ready for the next turn. Oh, oh. the regs. Yeah, he's regs. failed it. Sniper's going for a fire order. Shooting the LMG squad over by the bombed out brick house. Uh, he's one in. Nope. Nope. German regulars advance into the dense woodland with their LMG. They're going to shoot across at Corporal Unlucky over here. Stack some more bins back up. by sixes on everything. Oh, not a chance. Last American dice. 
He's putting the air spotter on this regular squad that's moved into the forest now. Um, it's a relatively good shot. I, you can't see these vets, so we can't target them. And the Neb, you know, what's he really going to do at this point? He's pushing up. He can start shooting it soon. You know, it's good. To, he needs to control this centre. The Germans need the centre. They need it or they that's lose. German dice. The officer runs uh, just behind this hill here. He's nice and safe. And uh, he's within a dash of that objective at the end of the game, I presume. I'm, you know, just... just Guessing, don't know what Gre what Greg's planning there. Now uh, that's the end of turn three, is it, gents? Yeah, turn three. three. So let's take a look as it stands. He managed to rally his flamer and dash it away from the zeroed in mortar in the Kubel wagon. So the Americans fended off the flamer and then they seized that opportunity and really brassed up the Germans, wiping out a veteran squad and getting a little lucky with the GIs shooting across here, killing two of the regulars. Um, they have managed to clear off the pins from uh, this guy here, this remaining GI, uh, and he can still contest this objective, so the Germans have to deal with him. But their main GI squad here remains on four pins. The Tiger is really successfully suppressing this entire flank, but uh, he keeps shooting at targets which can go down. It does force them down, it keeps them safe, but uh, it's not killing anything as of yet. So, Americans dominating on one flank for now, but with the Germans ready and recovered. Amer uh, Americans sort of... Uh, pinned down in the middle. Yeah, pinned down in the middle. Germans dominating on the other side of the board, but uh, with the Americans having a little more to respond with once they get their act together. Let's get Dyson nice back for turn four. Oh, you've got a call on your air observer? Yep. Let's go for it. So, you targeted these guys, needing a four. Come on. It's a two, man. Dice is German. He's going with the Tiger. He wants to force these GIs down so they still can't rally. He has, of course, gone down. Uh, so it's going to be sixes. Soft cover and down. Big gun. Oh, he oh, gets, gets it! it. Oh. Just a matter of time. They called him crazy. <laughs> they said he was mad, but he had a feeling. Okay. So they're quite spread out, but you'll probably get four of them, I would imagine. Can you get that four? Four. four? four easy. Okay, four. Four and twos. Three dead. Oops, slight mistake. Of course he was down, so fewer hits. Uh, we've redone that. He's actually got four uh, men left and a pin, so he didn't even need the other Next two. dice is US. He's going to pop a shot at the Tiger, needing a seven. Nope, they go down. Veteran squad advance into the dragon's teeth, taking the hard cover, shooting over at Corporal and Lucky over here, needing sixes followed by sixes because he's gone down. There you go for it, man. I'll just put that. Couple of chances. Five, Nothing. Five through the woodland. It's going to be sixes from the LMG onto these GIs. Okay, five for LMG and then three rifles. It's just down soft cover the whole way. Okay. Two hits. Regular veteran. Regular. Gets a kill. The team advance forwards to the burning bomber, propping the uh, weapon on the wing for support. They pop a shot, but sadly it drops a couple of yards short of the tiger. Greg's worst enemy, the spotter, is targeting <laughs> down on the neb now with a mortar shot. He's going to need a six. German mortars going to try and finish the job. He needs a five on here. If he, gets to, <laughs> if he gets a five or a six on the pins, they're gone anyway because of our pinned out. No, it's a one! Oh. The GIs are going to shoot across at the veterans. Now they take cover in the dragon's tooth. Five shots on fives, is it? Two hits. Two hits. And then four shots on sixes. Oh, three hits. Okay, killing on fives now. One kill One and a pin. Not by most bad. of the way through turn four now. However, we're pausing the game because the GIs are calling in their last uh, bonus question. They're gonna ask the audience so we're going to show you guys the lay of the land and then comment down below if you don't mind uh, taking the time to do so. Uh, give these guys some advice, see what they would have done so they can learn before the tournament they go to next weekend. So 
got the tiger over here, totally unpinned, active, uh, ready to suppress. And, you know, even you've still got fuel in the tank. You can get around the back of the um, Americans and start shooting down that flank, taking scalps, making the most of his last activations. Got the Neb over here, it's being zeroed in on with a mortar. And these guys have an airstrike coming in, which could well spell the death of them. But for, the Germans also have a very solid um, veteran mm. squad holding the center versus another veteran squad. It's just a firefight between veterans, between hardcover, across the center of the village. Now, he's calling it in because he's activating his steward. He just has the sniper and the steward left. And um, the steward's looking basically at this. He's in this cover. He can advance because he's in difficult ground. And he's got a few targets around him. Now, he's asked the audience, JP, do you want to give your advice on camera? Have you thought, thought about what you'd, uh, what you'd do if you were in this situation? Then I'll give mine. Greg, you can say you're, you know, well, you're not the audience, you're, you're yep. a contestant. <laughs> <laughs> I would drive forward and put as many shots onto that car as possible. I could not agree more. I've been <laughs> gritting my teeth, staying quiet to not be unfair. But uh, yeah, that Stuart is just going to ride up onto that hill and give that car the beans. Close the book on that flank and then, uh, yeah. And it's, yeah, in the bag, really, for these three objectives. The Germans are really going to have to work hard to get him off them then. Agreed? Agreed. Is that what you fancy? Yep. Let's okay, that. let's try that. Let's ask the audience around here. <laughs> Things have a little more depth to them than we uh, initially saw from the other side of the table. So he's got an officer here. So many options. Does he put the whole mounted into the officer? He's already run. He's just hiding away, ready to uh, control two objectives with a dash. It's great placement from Greg, by the way. But uh, Stuart's uh, here now. So does he maybe tickle him with eight shots from the LMGs, then put um, hull mounted coaxial and the big gun into here, uh, hull mounted pintle and the coaxial, just put 15 shots into the soft skin, probably hit with enough to get yeah. a couple of sixes, but then will it pen it? You know, who knows how many pens will he get? So just brass him up 23 shots into this, not that flamethrower out. Don't be greedy, don't just go for the dice. He's not doing anything, he's not achieving anything. He's Although it would really it. secure the next turn having two, potentially three dice killed with one blast. So he's got a ton of things he could do. I think for me, I would do one big shot and then I'd do Pintle, LMGs and Hull Mounted all on the car. I would as well. I would, yeah. yeah. And you ignore the officer for now. Nice you can get him, you can get a dice next turn. You're already ahead on the dice, right? Think yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go for that. Is that what you're going to do? You're yeah. sure you don't have to follow? No, no, we'll go for that. Okay. Not that close to the officer. Big gun first. He's got it. A six. Nice. Oh, nice. Okay, so you are uh, penning him. You're glancing on a two. Okay. He's got the two. He's got a glance for now. Okay. Okay, uh, now it's full chart because he's soft skinned. So uh, you can still. Uh, you can still get him on a four, five, or six. Doesn't matter. You just needed the glance. It's a two. He's immobilized. Okay. So, so, I mean, it doesn't really need to go anywhere right now. But it's a couple of pins. Mm -hmm. That's a couple of pins back on the flamer. Yeah. Now he's got 18 shots with MGs on fours. Can he stack enough hits on there to get another soft skinned hit on a six? Okay, MGs. It's a good roll. Oh, it's a great roll. Oh my gosh. Bigger. Bigger. We told him to put more vigor into his roll and show the dice his boss. Total superstition, of course, but uh, that's bro science for you. It checks out. Sometimes you just gotta lose the dice. Yeah, you just gotta just give him a bit of energy. Get him all. How are you supposed to climb all the way up to five or six if you don't give him the energy? It's a long way to climb. Uh, okay, needing a six now. He's got one. Ooh. He's got one chance. It's soft skinned. Just get a four, five, or a six now. It's all you need. All you need. It's oh, another that's two. Cool. That's, that's all he needs. A mo double immobilized is knocked out. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's D6 hits on the flamethrower. Killing on fours. Yeah. One dice, yeah? Mm -hmm. Nice. Six. Six. Whoa. So six it's nights. a knocked out result because two immobilized counts a knocked out result. That's just, that's the way it's written. 
not counting as immobilised and having to hop out, specifically because of the second immobilised. And he's done it. He's killed him. That's two dice out the bag. <sighs> Great. Whoa. Okay. Americans are really long. Stuart, three dice so far. Sniper taking a shot over at these veterans. Third time lucky on the LMG. Hits him. Needing a five. Gets him. He's on a roll. Okay, end of turn four. And it is a very, very interesting it's table beautiful. side. So... Uh, as we saw just then, that's two dice killed, putting the Germans on four casualties, six, re seven remaining. They've only killed one American unit fully so far, uh, but that does not represent the amount of casualties the Americans have taken. They're basically on one effective infantry squad left. This one's pinned beyond, it's going to need a couple of rallies probably, unless he gets very, very lucky there. Um, however, over here, he has been scrambling the bazooka. He's done a couple of runs and a dash. And he's now, uh, you know, facing off against the Tiger with two, you know, good anti-tank units, bazooka and a heavy anti-tank gun against the uh, Tiger. Uh, so, but the Tiger, again, you know, he's in a great position. He's really allowed the uh, Germans to put pressure here. Germans have repositioned. They've not got fully in the American's face, but they've got really nice placement. Greg's showing off his sort of uh, experience in terms of like competitive Position. play because he's got lots of really nice positioning. He knows how to control an objective without being on an objective. So, you know, fair play to him there. Absolutely. Obviously, you're new to wargaming in general. Um, so, we've got an airstrike to roll now. This could be an absolute game changer. Game changer. <laughs> if he strikes himself... You know, the Americans have been on a real roll that turn. Uh, you've made lemonade out of lemons for sure, mate, with, a, you know, this squad going down and all that that kind of thing. So we'll see. Needing a four now. It's a five. Okay, so it's going to come in on this squad. Uh, should hopefully secure uh, this. I'll make it even Stevens. And what is it? He's got a strafing fighter perfect for this situation. So you're going to hit him with two D6 hits and a plus two pen value. So two D6 hits, killing on two. So roll two dice. It's nine hits on the regs and you can go down. Yeah. They'll take it to four, okay. So you're killing on twos now. Uh, kill with, it'll be five. Is it rounding down or? Um, we'll chance, I think it's right, Roll five dice, I'm pretty sure it's rounding up. Is there a pen value on them? Uh, plus two, two, so you're killing on twos because he's regular. And um, four dice or five? Five, take another one. Uh, he's done it, so that's the squad wiped. Now, he's placed the token over here. He will actually uh, clip two units on D3 minus one pins. However, that actually ends up being within flak range of the Stuart. So will he friendly fire? One to three and he holds one. Okay, okay, so you do... No, he fires. He fires. So you now need to roll five dice. And um, five up. Don't get fives. Three to stop him. One, two, and two cocks. Oh, intense. Could they be reborn? No, sadly not. Okay, so the airstrike does go off. The dice of turn five is the tiger. He's shooting the Stuart. He's uh, just a four to hit. He's just over half range. Shooting all the way across the board there. He gets the hit. Gets the it's in the side. It's only pen six. Pen your armor's uh, eight, seven on the side. So pen two seven. to plant. Two seven. Yeah, but over half range. Minus Does it one. Did you shoot pen on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what do we need? A two. He's got a four. So four plus six is ten. Seven on the side, three or more. Two dice, keep both. It's wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> Tracks off and wrecked. The reign of the Stuart is <laughs> over. Sweet, sweet vengeance. That's what you bring the tiger for. Absolute table domination. Didn't even see it coming. Following up from the whole mountain and the bazooka. He's got two hits there. This could be great, absolutely clutch. Needing uh, his vet. <laughs> Is he vet or regular bazooka? Vet. Vet. Double kill. No. no. <laughs> a pin will do. Germans get the next dice. They're going for a six. Into these GIs. If they get this, 
It's going to be very difficult for the Americans. One dice on a six. Sorry, I, I, sorry Greg, I forgot. You also gets to roll on the spotter as well. Who's <laughs> <laughs> we first? Yeah. Who's first? Right, the squad. Squad first. Big dice. No. Um, Right, this is the one I want. <laughs> <laughs> he saved his look. No! Order check, he's uh, needs a nine. He gets it. With one Not sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's a veteran. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to shoot across at the tiger now, needing a five. Over half range. He is advancing first, sorry, just to get in. Five to hit. No. Water shooting back at the neb, hitting on fives. Yeah. He's got the hit there. So that's going to be uh, three of the crew. Out of four, killing on twos. Yep. He's got all three, D3 pins. It's one pin. Order check, now you're an artillery, so you take a minus for last man standing as well, mm -hmm. to your order check as well as your load. So uh, yeah, you can just roll it here. Uh, he's failed it. He's not a vet, is he a vet? No, oh, experienced. Yeah, he's got it. On the veteran G regulars? Regulars. Needing a nine. Yep. He's done it finally. D6 plus one pins. You need a big roll here, my friend. Oh, it's so a one. <laughs> Clears two pins out of what? Six? six. So he's on four left. Still four. Not great. We'll try and pop a shot on those GIs. Just make sure they don't get any good ideas now they're rallying. He needs a five. He misses just. Last German dies. The officer dashes away from the burning wreckage of the vehicles behind this obscuring ruin. The remaining GI passes order check, dashes six inches just into the bagage, a hop, skip and a jump from that um, objective there. And now it's your final dice and it's the sniper, isn't it? Shooting, same target as usual or yeah, something else? Time. Okay, so needing a three, followed by a five. He's got the hit. No kills though. It's another pin on the vets. On on. Turn five. Tigers are uh, holding this. He can't score the objective, but no what no GIs are taking that, whatever they do. Uh, central objective. Americans managed to force the Americans off. Uh, Americans managed to force the Germans off with an airstrike. Great maneuver. Just striking five regular doesn't seem like much, but uh, you can only hold so many objectives, although of course mortar can dash and uh, close to that, maybe get close enough. Uh, he's got his veterans holding here in a firefight, but not really on an objective. But likewise, these veterans, again, in a strong position amongst several objectives, but not actually on one. And then the air observers are uh, doing a hop, skip, and a jump over to try and contest this objective. He can't hold it. And this is your regular squad. Yes. And they've sprinted over to start trying to score this objective. So we're going into turn six now. And uh, what, pretty even, Stevens? You're getting onto your, that one. That one contested Americans. So the Americans could win it unless the Germans can do something about that central objective. Because they have, uh, well, they've not got it though. They've not got it though. They've got to get these guys, convince them to advance <laughs> forward into the base of the guns. You may, may or may not be Tiger. I don't think they can see the Tiger. So, uh, maybe Tiger Field? May, well, if, if, they, if they can't see the Tiger, they're not uh, afraid of it, obviously. Uh, right, so it's interesting. American slight advantage on the objectives, but uh, Germans certainly have things American they can dice. do. Bazooka going to try and put a shot through the front of that Tiger, needing a four now. Oh, this field gun passes his order check, hitting on a four. Oh, another <laughs> three. American mortar switching target onto the German mortar. Be a clutch six, this, if he gets it. No. I get advances forward onto that objective. There's no way he's dashing onto that, even if it gets to turn seven. Now it's locked down. He's now going to shoot everything into this GI squad. If you can deal with them, there's no way the Americans will get that objective. Yeah, on a four, he can't go down. He's got the hit. That's going to hit all three. Yep. Killing on twos. Bro, triple six. Someone's <laughs> looking down or up at you. So that's uh, that's that squad gone. That's essentially neutralising these objectives. No one can actually get a run into the forest to get within three inches unless it goes to turn Water seven. Packs up and runs to the edge of the forest, position for a potential turn seven. Dice have been for both sides. It's the end of turn six. We're about to roll to see if it goes on. We'll just show you the little manoeuvres that have taken place. Uh, regular securing this objective. Officer running over here, ready for a dash. Support these guys in case they take pins turn seven. They're ready to advance onto their 
it'll be contested ultimately unless someone gets a lucky kill. This objective locked down by the GI. I've been uh, the one that got, got away. The one that got away from Greg. He <laughs> <I>, uh, <laughs> took a, the hell of a de uh, you know lost seven of his buddies first turn, and then he's we score him in the end. So if you're a new player looking out, you know like these guys for tips on how to play better. You know, it's not over till the fat lady sings if you've got a guy left. Uh, and then <laughs> over here, as we can see, uh, Sniper Mortar set up for a turn seven dash on the objective and uh, Tiger dominating this one. Currently standing at a draw. Need to roll a dice, JP, do you want to roll it? Yeah, yes. And on a one to three game, ends in a draw. It goes It goes on. We're simulating a TO game. We've probably been, you know, a few... With filming and that, it's definitely gone over the tournament clock. So what we're going to say is they've just got to pull the dice. The TO's come and said, you've got five minutes. They're going to try and get through turn seven. Right, JP pulling the dice like lightning. No thinking time, boys. Dice is green. He's going to need some lucky six on the mortar. No. Nope. Next dice is green. I will didn't actually see this coming, which doesn't like me. I love a charge. Uh, he's declared a charge on these regulars here. Is he within six inches? He's got to be, hasn't he, there? Yeah. Yes, uh, but you can't, you can't declare that, mate. Sorry, you're a new yeah, player, you but um, you can't charge people you can't see. So you'll have, okay. to pick, you'll have to pick something else to do. Okay. And guys is American. He uh, can't see round through the ruins, so he can't declare a charge. Next best thing, he's going for an advance, doing what the GIs do best, brassing him up point blank on that objective. Oh, it's a nice little maneuver you've pulled off here. Damn, it's 11 on fours. <sighs> Heavy with those GIs advancing. Yeah. Point blank. I'm taking your hits out like a gentleman. He's only got the one kill. He's flogged the rolls, Greg. Oh. You can relax. <laughs> Dies for the GIs. He's advancing uh, into here. Doesn't need to pass any. Did he not have pins in it. Oh, it's the sniper. Yeah. So he's got one shot. Um, and if he's within six, he gets his pistol as well, which he will be. So you have pistol. <laughs> you get two shots. Two shots. Oh, it's double six! What a hit! Uh, okay, uh, force to kill. Oh, green! Oh, serious. Two kills. Double kill. It's a pin. Needs to and pass an order check. check on a seven. Oh, he oh, makes it! Oh, Look, oh, Greg. Oh, Look. You do that. see there that, you know, when you need to do these desperate competitive maneuvers like trying to grab objectives in the center of the mortar team, <laughs> um, you know, regular does help a little bit, but he's got away with it. Tiger decides to take things into his own hands here. He's advanced forward into the forest. He's contesting that objective. So even if he gets unlucky and doesn't kill them, even if the mortar now that he's on one guy with a pin uh, fails his order check, he can still contest this objective if the Americans don't score it. And he might, he might just score it himself. Okay, so you need 12 dice. Big on big goal, what are you doing? Big gun. Big, big gun. gun, so point blank, small target moved as a four. Oh. He gets the hit. Love the style. Oh, Love the style. <laughs> Love the style. Two of them on two ups. Yeah, it is indeed, sir. Yeah, they're dead. <laughs> Just blown them away. Smashes the tree branches falling everywhere. <laughs> Just launches a shell in. Okay. Four. Dealt with. Just pass an order check and that objective is yours, sir. These regulars have been on quite a journey, didn't they? They were for a second there. Uh, they advance into the room. They're within point blank of the spotter there. They're going to try and brass him up on sixes. Six dice. Oh, he gets the hit he needs. Just a four. And this objective will be his. No! Oh! <laughs> Just took an order check. Got a bit excited here. He got an eight. Because of the pin and inexperienced, he can't dash onto that objective. Meaning, he's just that, that's lost in the game right there. Could have won it. German dice. Lieutenant goes on ambush with his rifle. He has popped a shot over here earlier. Is that where the pin came from? Yeah. Now you've got to pass an order check. Uh, it's the last dice of the game, essentially. So um, if he passes this, it's going to be contested and. The, the Americans will what? The Americans will win, will you? One nil, yeah. But this sniper could uh, could sort things out. Go on. Air observer. Uh, air observer. Come on. Six. So he gets a six. So he runs onto the objective now. Greg needs to shoot him. Yep. It'll be small target, hard cover. Gets a four, was it? Yep. It's a mess. So. 
Contested over here with the final dice, no one scores it. Contested yeah. over here, those darn GIs with their advance and shoot. Um, over here, final dice of the game is the bazooka. Failed it, final dice of the bazooka, final dice of the game. He hasn't actually activated. It's the final effective dice, but <laughs> for a medal. Let's see if we can get this tank in the side. Three to hit, my friend. Five. It's a hit, so okay. pen five, armor nine on the side. Still need a four to glance. He's got the glance. Light him up. On six, I'll set him on fire. It's your only chance. Three. Three is um, stunned. So we just would put him down. He's out of the game, but he's activated no effect. Okay, tickles him. So with all that being said, it's the final. That's it. That's it. The uh, Americans finish. Who would have known it? <laughs> one objective scored back here. Shutting down this one. All their plans came off despite a friendly airstrike shutting them down. Final thoughts, gentlemen. This was a tournament practice game. You've had to do it to a clock. You've had to make snappy decisions. You've only had three big questions. Me and JP have probably slowed things down, mm -hmm. if anything. You've done really well. Um, what do you think? What have your number one takeaway, MVP? Any uh, final statements? One man can do a lot. One man can do a lot. Just keep him alive, get that rally, stay down, get on an objective. Yeah, Tiger, no pins. Loads. Yeah. Go Tiger. The Tiger's yeah. been brilliant. The Tiger's yeah. been brilliant, yeah. And with a bit more target selection, I think you could have killed five or six dice, man. Like, if you shot that squad yeah. with the big gun and that it tickled him with the pins, he'd have been on three pins, that squad would have been dead. The Tiger's just rolled across Then the you're field. off. Yeah, that's it. But, uh, yeah, American win. Well done, man. GG, anyway. GG. Shaking. Good game, guys. Uh, JP, final GG. thoughts? Um... There's a lot to take away from that game. <laughs> There's a lot to learn, isn't there? Maybe we'll but let these guys the pack up and we'll have yeah. a little final thoughts. We'll get the catalog. So with all that being said, guys, I hope you found this video interesting and entertaining. This has been the Scholar Progenium. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.